on the channel, so I'm going to call sure. it round two. We'll work on technique if. Uh, in our first roll, it was a no-gi, and I was just fending him off, basically. In this roll, I'm going to play super relaxed. Also, I'm coming off a little rib injury, so I'm trying not to strain it. It's a ligament in my, uh, in my rib area. I actually missed a couple of weeks. It's impossible not to get small injuries, but I think we can avoid big injuries. So Gil is uh, in sanitation and is very strong and he uses it. He's kind of like Chris from the uh, white belt video, taming, taming the white belt. Uh, he goes, he goes after it, you know, he tries to the best that he can. I just need to show him more that the answers aren't in <laughs> grunting and the answers aren't in muscling and the answers aren't in firing off one attack after the other, even though it's a very low level. It just requires proper framing and leverage. So when you do, when you use those two things, you don't have to worry about getting hurt. When you're exploding all the time or you're trying to outpace your opponent, that's when you're gonna get an injury. So here I'm just messing with him with my legs, I'm kicking out his knee, I'm doing all the things that I normally do. But I'm being super relaxed and I'm Take those legs responding off. to what he gives me. So when he does something, I do something. When, if I want that, I could run ahead in the moves and cut him off much easier. So as you can see, my hands are open, they're very relaxed, my hands aren't shaking. I'm breathing with my mouth closed and I'm just following him following what he's doing and responding appropriately. Not over-responding, responding with just enough. So here I knew he couldn't break my grip with one hand the way he was trying. So now to keep his other hand out of the equation, I'm simply putting my foot on his bicep. <laughs> I could take spider guard by grabbing his sleeve but I'm just playing relaxed. So here's his cat, by the way. His cat loves me. I love animals. <laughs> Especially cats, I must admit. So here, he's making his own spider guard with my right leg. He's holding my pants leg, and then I'm just putting my foot on his bicep, which holds him back and is very easy for me and doesn't use, I don't use any energy doing it. About 10 years ago, Spider Guard, in my opinion, was relatively new and Allianz guys were using it and uh, at Marcelo's, a lot of the training was beating the Spider Guard. So I think I have a pretty good Spider Guard defense. Spider Guard is, in my opinion, oh, again, one of right. the hardest yeah, yeah. guards. The it's not the worst, no, it's just your knee. Were. Something because slide. there's so many moving parts. A brand new white belt shouldn't be playing spider guard. He should be playing full guard. But here we're doing some wrist fighting. So I'm just frustrating him and using no effort at the same time against someone who is younger and stronger. So there I just hit my tripod sweep. And now I have his lapel. My right hand has his lapel from the other side underneath him. So that prevents him from rolling away. But he's super strong. So I have his collar with my left hand and I let him roll. And then when he rolled, I went right to a knee cut pass. See, I, I replaced my knee with my hand, with my right hand. My knee was holding his hip back, and now my right hand is holding his hip back. I don't want him to be able to get his legs back into the equation. As strong as he is with his right hand, he still can't bench press me off with one arm. And that's what he's trying to do there. Not impossible, but super inefficient. And it leads to muscle fatigue and gassing and heavy breathing many of the things you might start to notice. 
actually there. He almost bench pressed me off with one <laughs> with one hand on my uh, pant leg. So here I'm just cooking him. I'm, I know that I don't want him to get his legs back in, and I just want to see what it's like to try to keep someone pinned down who's fighting with with everything they have to get out. You know, the police, law enforcement, they deal with this probably every day. And I think that it's important that the reason why jiu-jitsu is so important with law enforcement is just being able to hold somebody down like this. This alone is invaluable because I'm not getting tired and he's exhausted. That's key. It's not like we're both getting tired and you know, I'm starting to get worn out. I could do this all day. And the more he tries to explode to get out, the more tired he's becoming. And then there he made an overcommitment. And I could have took his back right here, but instead I just went to the turtle. I call it like a turtle smother. So I'm waiting for him to do something. If he rolls, I could dive ahead and roll before him and take his back. I could pull him to the side. His knees and elbows are far apart and that makes everything else vulnerable because his structure isn't there. There's a lot I could be doing from here that I'm not. I could easily step over and throw a hook in if I wanted. So there he rolled back into me to try to escape. <coughs> And now I know he's getting tired. I don't know, I went to mount somehow there. I couldn't see it. I have a black gi on with a black background. But as you can see, I'm in mount. I'm not breathing heavy. We're seven minutes into the round. So there he tried to throw me off. I always go right to the collar here. I grab the collar and I, when I put my right leg over his shoulder, it's, that's the finish, see? So that nice. was a loop choke. <laughs> One of my favorite. Oh, thank you, I noticed if I could pass somebody's guard many I times, so I don't know. just grab their collar. How? And this especially happens on more seasoned guys minutes. that you would think would right. defend it. But they're not used to getting their guards passed. Their guard is so good, they don't have to worry about their defense when their guard is passed. But that's where the real defense begins. The submission defense. If I go with a young, strong blue belt and he passes my guard and maybe I can't even escape for a few minutes, one thing's for sure, he's not finishing me. Helio Gracie used to say, I might not submit you, but you'll never submit me. One of my favorite lines. There I tried to step over to mount. It happened very quickly, but he was able to bring up his knee. And when I felt that, I put my leg back where it came from. So here, I'm, I know he's breathing heavy already, so I'm trying to do like a paper cutter, but one that's more annoying, not one that I'm looking to finish. There, I went to knee on belly and I switched. I hopped to the other side. You see, I'd use this a lot. Because knee on belly is escapable, but if I feel like you're escaping and I could just jump over to the other side, now I, I, you went from escaping to me being pretty much on your back. So there I had him in the gift wrap, and he, he really, you know, he's super strong. All, all the, I don't know if it shows in the video, but all, everything that he's trying, I feel, I feel the strength, and I thank God that he's using it in an inefficient manner. But ah. <laughs> one day his strength and skill combo will probably catch up to me. <clears throat> So now I'm just playing, I'm defending. I, I, again, I couldn't see what happened. It looks like I just went to knee on belly, like I did a quick guard pass to knee on belly. Here again, I'm bothering him with the paper cutter choke. And he was able to roll me over and bang again. I look to grab that collar and wrap it around his throat, but I missed it. So now I'm looking to get my body to the back of his tricep so he can't bring his arm back and then sweep him. But he's so strong with my, com Ooh. combined with my lack of perfect technique Ooh. that he was able to posture up and get out of it. Really? Yeah. 
But I just want to thank everybody for watching, and uh, please like, share, and if you haven't already, subscribe.